Let's start with the review of some basic facts. So let's see what a Cartesian plane is, what how to put points on a Cartesian plane, what is the slope, how to graph lines, and how to graph something when you actually do not know what it looks like. So let's go fairly fast on. This is the Cartesian plane. A Cartesian plane has an origin, which is where the two axes cross. It has a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. In general, we call this the x-axis and this the y-axis, although that can definitely change when we do different applications. And the other thing that it has is quadrants. Now, see, it's divided into four areas. We call this area the first quadrant, and then we go around counterclockwise. Second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. We usually use Roman numerals for that. How do you place points on the Cartesian plane? Well, it's ordered by x and y. The x was the horizontal um, axis, the y is the vertical axis. So if I want to place this, where's my red marker? Well, I don't have my red marker with me. Uh, 2 and 3, 2 would be going on the x axis and 3 is going up 3. So that's 2, that's 3. There's my point 2 and 3. Where's my point minus 4 and minus 6? Again, that's the x, so I'm going to go minus 4 and up 6. And where's my point minus 3 and minus 7? With my green marker, which is also missing. And uh, it's minus 3, it's going minus 3 this way, and minus 7 going down to the minus 7. And that's how we place points in the Cartesian plane. So let's review about slope. This is very important. Slope, you may remember, usually um, denoted with the letter M, and it's rise over the run. So rise is how far it goes up and down, and run is how far it goes left and right. If it goes up, it's positive, and if it goes to the right, it's positive too. So if, it go, if it, the line's going down, we're going to say it's negative, and if it's going to the left, that's negative too. So the change in Y is the rise, the change in X is the run, and here's a cute little uh, diagram to remember. Then you go up and then you go across. So this line right here, what is the slope for this line? Well, if we look here, it goes rise over run is 2 over 4. So 2 over 4. We can simplify that, dividing both by 2, and that's 1 over 2. And if we look at over here, well, let's say we're going down by 6 and left by 12. So really would be saying something like negative 6 over negative 12. Well, if that's the case, the minus and the minus will cancel out, and the 6 and the 12 can be divided by 6, and we end up that the line always has the same slope, and that's 1 over 2. So you can put the triangle on top, and you can put the triangle on the bottom, and that will give you the slope of the straight line. Well, slopes have can be positive and can be negative. And how? Well, if we say that the slope is positive, we mean that it goes up to the right. If the slope is zero, it's horizontal. And if the slope is negative, then it's going down and to the right. And I can't just say going up or going right because, of course, this line right here well, that's going up this way, but it's going down this way. Think about a hill. When you go on a bike, is it going up or is it going down? Well, it depends which direction you're going. So we are talking about going towards the right. So a slope of one half, that just means that we're going to go up one. So I'm going to start anywhere because I don't know where else. Let me see. I start right here. So if I go up one, one, and over two, one, two. There's my point. Up one and over two. There's my next point. Up one and over two. There's my next point. And then we can use uh, a ruler to put this together. So it would be something like this. Once I have enough points, I can follow the pattern and then draw the straight line. If it M is negative two, then, and again, I'll just start anywhere. Let me use another color. So let's say I start here. And if I say negative 2, well, what is negative 2? 
there's no oh then I realized that I can see negative 2 over 1 to see it properly and the rise is negative 2 and the run is 1 so that's 2 down and 1 to the right so 1 2 down and 1 to the right 1 2 down and 1 to the right 1 2 down and 1 to the right now you may notice that if I thought that the minus was with the bottom, if there's only one minus, I can do the other way around. I can say two up and one to the left. What would that do? Two up and one to the left. Two up and one to the left. So it just continues the pattern. And as you can see, my my um, points all line up. Therefore, I can draw a straight line all the way through. Now that was just the slope, but they didn't tell us where to start. So this is where we go. We say slope and y-intercept form and how do we graph y equals mx plus b well m we know is the slope and b is the y-intercept what is the y-intercept is where the line crosses the um, the y the vertical axis therefore in this case the slope is one half and the y-intercept is plus one so we're going to start with that plus one we start with the y-intercept so at the plus one, we're going to put a point. And now I take care of the slope. Up one and two to the right. Up one and two to the right, another point. Up one and two to the right, and I continue that pattern. Up one and two to the right. And I'm going to continue the pattern on the other side too to get some more points. So we down one and two to the left. Down one and two to the left. Down one and two to the left. Until I get enough points where I can go down one and to the left, down one to the left, and put the last point. Up one, two, up one, two. And now that I have them all in line, I can draw the line through all those points. All right? There it is. What about this? Y is equal to 3 minus 2x. Hmm. A little bit tricky because my minus 2 is besides the x and that's what makes it the slope it's not the first number then the first number is alone and the number that's alone is the y-intercept and therefore my y-intercept here is 3 so I start right there and now my slope is minus 2 so like we remember from the first page it means 2 down 1 over 1 2 1 over 1 2 1 over 1 2 one over and I can continue that pattern until I run out of space up to one over up to one over up to one over and there's my second line now because I didn't use the colors that I was planning on using my two lines look the same and I can't look let them look like that so I don't know which ones which by looking at this so I will have to either put a and a or B and B or actually write the equation so this was one half x plus one and this one is y is equal to three minus two x and now I know which one is which but what would happen if you get to graph something like this something like x squared minus x minus one now we will learn some ways of graphing it but at this point in time you don't really know how to do it um, so what you can do whenever it's something like this and it will happen in the first chapter You'll just do a table of values. So this is what this table of values will look like. You set up your x and you pick what x values you want to put in. And then you just copy down the formula without the x. So let's say I just chose from minus 2 to 2. But we could have chosen from 10 down to 0 or from 0 to 1 or whatever it is. And then you just plug it in. So it was x squared. So minus 2 squared minus minus 2 minus 1. So what does this give us? Minus 2 squared is 4, minus minus 2 is plus 2, so 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 minus 1 is 5. So that gives us a point which is minus 2 and 5. The minus 2 that I picked, because this was your input, we picked the input and this equation will just spit out an output. So now I can go back here and I say minus 2 and 5 is going to be a point of my of my function and then I'll check the second one minus 1 so minus 1 squared is 1 minus minus 1 it's plus 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 
2 minus 1 is 1. So minus 1 and 1 is another point. Minus 1 and 1. There's another point there. And etc. etc. So you can continue and then once you finish putting some points you may get the pattern and then you can speed things up and if not just keep on putting points until you run out of the graph. This would be actually a parabola.